Um, what I want to point out the rest of today is some of the interesting facts to know about fluids. And the biggest is, I guess, what we call um, pressure due to weight of fluid. And this is the demonstration for it. Not the spell jar, I'm just uh, moving it off so I don't damage it. Um, I'm also just moving this off so I don't damage it once again. Um, this is the demo I used to illustrate uh, pressure due to weight of fluid. You might have seen it. It's a, just a simple column with a three holes in it. And let me first fill it up with the water. And um, so it's just a column of water. Now the interesting part is um, when I uncork these holes. When I remove the corks from each one of these holes, uh, watch what you see. So let me try to remove them all at the same time. Do you see the water coming out at different rate? And why do you think that is? So you know, water is coming out the side, sort of perpendicular to the vertical wall. But how fast the water is coming out down here is different from how fast the water is coming out here. Yeah, more force, more pressure. Like you talk about your water pressure in shower or whatever, right? This is the exact same thing. Where the water is coming out more forcefully is where there's more pressure. So. Uh, this is something we can actually drive. Based on what little mechanics we know, we can actually drive a relationship between the um, aspects of this that you can measure and how much pressure there should be here. So um, I think this is a good time to take a break. Let's take a short break, and when we come back at 2.05, we will drive that expression. And that's something you kind of need to know, and we'll be using it for a couple different things as well. Welcome back. So let me just uh, put water back in here so that uh, you have a prop to think about as we um, draw some uh, diagrams and uh, try to think of a way to analyze it. So you have some intuitive sense there is a pressure at this uh, lower position here because you see that when I take this off, then the water comes out. And in fact, you can, you, you can see what it looks like when the pressure is zero. Let me get rid of some of the, hmm. let me get rid of, so just to do this. You can see this uh, amount, how fast the water is coming out. It gets uh, slower over time. And in fact, uh, when the water comes down to exactly this height, no water is getting pushed out. I mean, at some point it's because water is below, so there's no water to get pushed out. But, um, as it's approaching that, when you barely have just a little amount of water, water basically leaks out. It's no, no longer shooting out. It's because at this point, there's really no pressure here at all. So, um, so you can see intuitively some kind of relationship between the amount of pressure at this point and how much liquid is above that point, right? And we can actually express that with this concepts that we have um, expressed. So let me draw that uh, diagram. So imagine a cylinder of water that uh, at some height. So imagine having this filled up to some height. There's some amount of water. Uh, let's say it's water. So density of water is what you have here. And what you would uh, like to imagine doing is imagine opening a hole very near the bottom. And um, essentially what you will be interested in is you can put it two different ways. Uh, let me put it first the way that relates to what you were seeing there before, the water just shooting out. So, so the way you can analyze it is you can imagine a small element of water that's here. Right? And you can say outside here, pressure is um, zero. Or, you know, it's the same pressure as the atmospheric pressure, some kind of environmental pressure. So you have some environmental pressure peanut outside. And 
what you can say he is that inside here, you have a higher amount of pressure. Inside, within the fluid, we have some higher amount of pressure, P naught plus delta P. And this additional pressure is what's responsible for pushing this element of water out. Because, uh, you know, then pressure times this area gives you a force that's pushing it out. Force is this amount of net force is this amount of pressure times the area. So that would be accelerating the water through. So by the time it leaves completely, it has some velocity uh, with the trajectory that you're seeing. So you know that's what you're seeing. So really, what you are interested in is at this uh, kind of a height, how much additional pressure delta P do you have? And you can see intuitively where that pressure is coming from. Imagine this uh, kind of an imaginary surface at this height. Then what you can see within the container that you don't have outside the container is that you have all this water, right? All this water is pressing down on this um, kind of an arbitrary surface that I just drew up to divide up the water. So, you know, it's not uh, actual, there's nothing that actually divides it, but I'm just uh, saying, um, I'm set considering this water below separately from the water above, and the water above is exerting some amount of pressure um, along this boundary. So we can calculate the pressure, and we can do it easily using this definition of pressure that we introduced. So um, if I want to calculate the amount of pressure here, then what I want you to say is, all right, the pressure P, the pressure is equal to some Amount of force that I'm going to figure out in a bit, amount of force divided by area. Where is this force coming from? Force of gravity. So weight, right? Force of gravity. So gra that's the weight of all this mass. So it would be the, um, this force would be the weight of all this uh, water. So mass of the water times g. That would be the force. Now, when you write it this way, this mass, it's going to depend on a whole lot of quantity. It's going to essentially depend on how much water here is. So uh, what I want to do is I want to rewrite this mass in terms of, um, um, in terms of some simple parameters that I can measure. So the, some simple parameters that I can measure are things like the area. The cross-sectional area here, I can measure it once and that'll never change, it's constant. Um, I can probably use density of water. And one single parameter that'll probably be useful is height of this water. So I can express this mass this way. I can say this mass is going to be the density of water times the volume element. In this case, this volume would be the cross-sectional area times the height. Right, that seems reasonable, that's the volume. So the mass is the density times cross-sectional area times height. Now, when you plug it in, this is what you see. You see a nice cancellation. So amount of pressure along the surface is equal to density of water times area times height times G. Oops, uh, I meant to use capital H. Times height times G divided by area from the definition of pressure. And here you see that the area cancels out. So whether it's a wide container or a narrow container, it turns out it doesn't matter. Because when you are looking at pressure, it's a, you know, force per area. So if you have larger area, then you have larger you know, area, but you also have larger force because you, you have more amount of water. 
So this is a formula that we call, um, what you get is what we call pressure. I don't think there's a better name than this. It's kind of a long name. Pressure due to weight of fluid. And that's equal to the density times height, or the way we usually write this density, times gravitational acceleration. Density, or I guess density of fluid in general, times g times the height, the depth of the fluid. Good. Now, I'm going to just assert one thing without proving it. Even though we um, derived this, in this specific case of a straight wall cylinder, it turns out this result is valid even when you have uh, sloped surfaces. Like if you had something that looks like regular drinking glass. So you know, if you have some container that instead of having this, well, let me just modify this side. If you have a container that looks more like this, it turns out that the pressure at this height is still given, this by, given by this formula, even though you have additional mass up here. How does that work? How, does, how do the forces work out? I mean, you know, if you take the, this amount of mass and divide it by this force uh, area here, then you are going to get greater pressure, aren't you? So you know, we are not going to spend a lot of time with this. Um, you can read about it in Giancoli if you want. But really what it comes down to is when you have a, this sloped surface, then there's going to be some normal force from the wall. That is an upward component. So that's helping balance out some of the weight of the water. And, and the result is that whatever shape of this is, doesn't matter. This is the correct formula for no matter what kind of shape of container you're dealing with. Um, all right, so that's the pressure due to weight of fluid. And th this is exactly what you are seeing illustrated here. Because um, you know, it's the, at a deeper depth, there's, um, um, there's, uh, there's you know, greater pressure. So the water gets pushed out uh, at a faster rate. Now, one thing might be a bit confusing um, because um, so you are used to dealing with the force as a vector quantity, right? So your inclination might be to think of pressure like a force, you know, of, um, so a vector quantity. If you look at it that way, this is where it could get confusing. Because the pressure due to weight of fluid, it's all pointing downward, right? But the force on this uh, fluid element it's going horizontal. How come? That's a sort of where the opening is. And with the force due to pressure, so actually pressure is a scalar. Pressure is like a temperature. There is no direction associated with the pressure. The force does have direction. And the direction of force actually comes from the geometric shape. So imagine you have, um, you have a, like a cube. Imagine you have a cube that you have different pressure at different size of the wall. And the direction of the force will always be perpendicular to the surface. So at the top surface, you would get what you expect. At the top surface, the weight of the water will be pressing down. At, but on the side the surface, weight of the water is not pressing down or up. It's pressing perpendicular to the um, area, so pressing sideways. And here's the most fun part. The pressure on the bottom, uh, or force due to pressure on the bottom surface, it's actually upward. So pressure actually pushes it up instead of downward. So be counterintuitive until you think of it this way. So this is how um, I like to think of it. Once again, imagine a, a, a small fluid element. Imagine a small element of fluid just before, just below my cube, right? And this is what I like to imagine. In what direction would this fluid element move if my object wasn't here? Will it rush in to fill in that gap? 
or will it stay there? Little Russian, right? Unless there's like air get there, but you know, if it's a vacuum here, this fluid element will rush in. Now we do this object here; it's not rushing in, so something is pushing it out to keep it out. And the force that you get on this surface is the reaction force. It's the force, so you know, this surface is pushing the fluid element so it doesn't rush in, and fluid element on in return is pushing the surface up. Yeah. But you know, all of that, I guess it doesn't really matter in the end. The rule that you should remember is that the force due to pressure is always perpendicular to the area where the force is being applied. So uh, when you have a hole that's uh, sideways like this, this is the area, so the force is going horizontally, gets accelerated horizontally. And you can you know, see it here. I mean, it's not that surprising. So here it's coming out horizontally, when I angle it up, it angles up because um, the force is perpendicular to this surface. 